Helmi El Duque is co-founder and chief executive officer of Gardent, who just listed on the NASDAQ this week. Helmi, tell us a little bit about Gardent. I know you're in the liquid biopsy uh, market. Please break that down for us and give me a little bit more on what exactly Gardent does. Yeah, so um, if you think about late-stage cancer patients, um, one of the things that's important for them is to be able to match them with the most effective therapies. And typically what's required is a tissue biopsy, really physically cutting a piece of that tumor and characterizing what's driving that cancer from a molecular level. Um, unfortunately, in lung cancer, for instance, a tissue biopsy costs $14,000, has a 19% complication rate. And so we found a way, you know, through our liquid biopsy, Garden 360, to be able to replace that tissue biopsy with a simple blood draw. Um, and results come back to physicians in about a third or half the time. So it's easier, faster, and quicker. So a year and a half ago, you did take uh, private funding from SoftBank. At the time, you took what you called an ambitious goal uh, to uh, sequence one million cancer patients in the next five years. We're a year and a half in now. How is that going? You know, it's going well. Um, we've uh, you know, now sequenced you know, tens of thousands of patients, and we have a lot of opportunities behind us. We're uh, seeing tailwinds from Medicare reimbursement and lung cancer. Um, we're uh, seeing a lot of private payers covering the test, and uh, we're seeing a lot of progress in terms of using our technology platform and applying it to cancer survivors for recurrence detection, as well as using that data to apply it for early detection for the rest of us. And finally, we're seeing opportunities internationally and as well. We've set up a joint venture with SoftBank to really uh, accelerate our commercialization of our products in Asia and the Middle East. And we're very excited about the opportunities we're seeing there. So as you said, you're in the market uh, kind of full force in the late stage cancer patient space. Uh, you mentioned early detection. That seems kind of like uh, the end goal for a lot of companies like yours to be able to have a blood test that can screen for all cancers uh, in an early detection scenario. Is that kind of what you all are going here? Is that kind of the, the golden goose at the end for Garden? No, it's, it's, we believe that precision oncology or precision medicine is applied to cancer has had good progress, but it's mostly been in the metastatic setting or late stage disease setting. And so it really is often too little too late. If we can develop tests that can bring that paradigm to the earliest disease state, you know, around where early detection is most appropriate, we believe we can fundamentally change mortality curves in cancer. And so the, the, we've, had, have, we've had a disciplined approach from day one, starting by studying what late stage cancer looks like in the blood, using that data, leveraging that data to then solve the problem of what early stage cancer looks like for cancer survivors, and then going uh, eventually to early detection in a systematic approach. And that early detection and systematic approach, uh, you're not the only company out there who's uh, trying to really uh, crack the code on this one. Your former employer, Illumina, uh, kind of created and backs Grail, which I know is a competitor, uh, to get to that end goal. Uh, across the market, how soon do you think it is before we see either Garden or another company come out with a, a blood test that can be an early detection test for uh, all cancers? You know, at this point, um, we're not uh, you know, disclosing timelines with respect to our early detection program, but I can tell you we're making rapid progress towards that goal. Later this year, we'll be uh, launching the first series of tests uh, for the cancer survivor market um, for use with biopharma companies. And we've released some data around our early detection program that looks very promising. And so I think we're quickly approaching that goal. And I would say stay tuned in terms of more data coming out of that program. And, and I sure will stay tuned. I am curious, though, with so many folks kind of targeting that early de detection space, is there room for more than one company in that market? Early detection is something that, you know, humanity has been working towards thousands of groups for decades. It's been heavily underinvested, and so we actually applaud more money going into that space because it's desperately needed for so many cancer patients and, and for, the re for, for all of us. So many people are blindsided by the disease. And so uh, we think it's great that you know, there's finally investment going into an area that traditionally was heavily underinvested. So when it comes to investment, you now have a war chest here of about 200, almost $240 million coming off of this IPO uh, share offering. When you think about where that money is going to go to work, what are you prioritizing for Garden going forward? 
So we're seeing a lot of opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, we're seeing uh, you know the the tailwinds with reimbursement, lots of private payers coming on board. Um, we're, we just got you know breakthrough status for our FDA submission uh, for F FDA um, a pathway earlier this year. We'll be submitting in the first half of the year. That will lead to pan cancer Medicare approval. Um, and as I said, you know we'll be launching newer tests. Uh, later this year. And so, you know, we see a lot of opportunity ahead of us. We want to continue to be aggressive and continue to expand the business. So I hear a lot covering the IPO space. Uh, folks say all the time, if somebody's got the backing of the likes of SoftBank, why is an IPO even necessary? What are your thoughts on, on that kind of musing that I hear? Why did you choose to list when, you know, you, you've amassed quite the war chest and so has Grail for that matter as a private company in this space? We think, um, you know, as we start um, branching out from advanced cancer to recurrence uh, detection, there are 15 million cancer survivors in the United States today um, that desperately need this type of technology. And then obviously early detection, which is a, a wider platform. Um, we believe that uh, becoming a public company gives us the awareness that's necessary for this important story. And when it comes to awareness, uh, you talked about one regulatory body that obviously should be aware in your IPO uh, process. You did talk about the importance of the FDA approving um, a lot of the stuff you're working on. I'm curious, under the Trump administration, have you noticed any distinct changes in how the FDA is operating? Is it more of an opportunity for you or are you seeing things kind of slow down? What's been your viewpoint um, under this new administration? We think, you know, the, the, we think that the FDA, you know, continues to be um, very responsive. Um, we've enjoyed our interactions with the FDA, and so I think it's good uh, not just for the industry but for cancer patients. And so we've been very pleased so far um, with our dialogue and our discussions.